from the station working for you. This is WRTV News at 6, streaming now. Full capacity, it's nearly impossible. We we'll certainly are going to try our very best. Now at 6, most of Indiana will enter stage 5 of the state's reopening plan this weekend. Weekend, The impact that will have on you and why one restaurant owner says full capacity will be a major challenge. The biggest challenge right now is that there just isn't a lot going on downtown Indianapolis. It's unclear if Marion County will enter stage 5 with the rest of the state, but businesses in Indianapolis need your support right now. The new campaign aiming to bring people back downtown. And one word sums up the weekend forecast. First weekend of fall, warm temperatures. The two big changes for next week detailed ahead. And good evening to you here at 6 o'clock. I'm Mark Mullins. Amanda Starantino has the night off. This weekend, Indiana enters stage five of reopening, so that means full capacity for many businesses which have not filled their establishments in months. WRTV's Alyssa Donovan explains what changes you can expect to see in the name of safety for customers and staff. Now that we're entering the final stage of the reopening plan, some business owners say it's going to be very difficult to fill their businesses to capacity as they're allowed to while maintaining social distancing. Hey, oh, we're good. Our patio has been very busy this spring, summer, fall, so we've benefited from that. Cobblestone has been a staple restaurant in downtown Zionsville for decades. 20 years this October. And while the patio has gotten a lot of action, owner Kent Esra is glad he'll finally be able to fill the dining room. We will try and fill every table if we can. Um, if someone wants to social distance, we'll certainly try to accommodate that. But come Saturday, it's, you know, all bets are off. It will be difficult to do the six feet if we're at full capacity. Governor Holcomb says entering the next stage is due to trends they're seeing and everyone participating in wearing masks. It's because of this. In this phase, gyms will also be able to operate at full capacity. The owner of Barkus Fitness in Fisher says the changes for her day-to-day -day operations will be minimal. People work out throughout the day at her gym, so it's never at full capacity. The biggest adjustment she'll see is allowing people to use the water fountains again. As far as refilling bottles and those types of things. Barkus's business has actually been doing quite well the past few months. Since reopening in May, she went from 70 members to nearly 500. I think people were just looking for that, like, smaller facility. But for other establishments, the progression into Phase 5 could not have come soon enough. Very happy that we're moving forward. The governor says health officials will stay in contact with each community. And then make recommendations and collaborate with the local communities um, on steps that they can take if cases start to tick up. I'm Alyssa Donovan, WRTV. Indiana's Stage 5 reopening plan officially starts on Saturday. Keep in mind the statewide mask mandate will remain in place. Here are the other key takeaways for Stage 5. Size limitations will be removed for social gatherings and meetings. Organizers of events with more than 500 people must submit a written plan to the health department. Restaurants and bars may open at full capacity, but social distancing must be maintained between tables. Gyms and fitness centers may resume normal operations. Again, face coverings are still required, and you must continue to maintain social distancing. Indiana Stage 5 reopening plan may not apply to Marion County, which usually differs from the rest of the state when it comes to COVID-19 restrictions. Today, WRTV asked the Marion County Public Health Department if it would move to stage five on Saturday with the rest of the state. And after that question, the city responded with the announcement of a press conference tomorrow with Mayor Joe Hogsett and Marion County Public Health Department Director Dr. Virginia Kane. They are expected to announce Marion County's next steps tomorrow. We did not get a direct answer to our question today. Downtown businesses in Marion County are continuing to face challenges during the pandemic. Business is still slow as many office buildings remain empty and conventions and events are either postponed or canceled. WRTV's Nicole Griffin shows us how the Back Downtown campaign is now aiming to help. 
The entire goal of the Back Downtown campaign by Downtown Indy Inc. is a rallying cry to encourage residents to once again come back downtown here in Indianapolis and visit local businesses so that they can recover. It's been difficult for everyone downtown. The District Tap Downtown is celebrating one year in its new location. Between not having anyone in the skyscrapers to not having the conventions in town to no sports traffic, you know, we're doing about 40 or 45 percent of what we normally be doing. Outside seating along Georgia Street is helping, but proprietor Michael Cranfield says he's looking forward to restrictions in Marion County being lifted. It would be so much for us to be able to regain our bar top back, but at least right now we are able to comfortably serve customers. Near Monument Circle on Market Street, the manager of Supremacy says they are only doing 15 to 20 percent of normal sales. That is because they rely heavily on employees from downtown offices ordering lunch. If you did $10,000 in a day as a restaurant downtown, you're probably doing 1000 to 1500 if you're in the immediate downtown area. The Downtown Recovery Committee is focusing on improving safety and security using $750,000 from the city. As that work continues, the Back Downtown campaign is hoping to encourage residents beyond downtown to try to visit the area once again. Downtown is the heart of Indianapolis, and we are working very hard to get that message across so that when the pandemic is over and when people are back in offices, we still have options for them. You certainly don't want to go back to India no place. You know, this is Indianapolis and, and we've really built this city up over the last 20 years. And right now there's a lot of restaurants and a lot of retailers that would really enjoy your support. Leaders hope this new campaign will help bring the energy and pride back downtown. Working for you, Nicole Griffin, WRTV. Part of the Back Downtown campaign includes a page on Downtown Indy Inc.'s site featuring a local business every week. Any businesses downtown can be added to this. We'll put a link to that page on the WRTV News app. One of the other ways the city is trying to attract people back to downtown Indianapolis is with the Groovin' Back Downtown event this weekend. It's happening at the newly renovated amphitheater at White River State Park on Saturday from 2.30 in the afternoon to 7.30 in the evening. Grooving Back Downtown will feature local bands, food trucks, beer and wine in a socially distanced environment outside. You must buy tickets at White River State Park on Saturday. Prices are between $5 and $15 per ticket. The event will be limited to the first 1,800 people. As you can see from our Weather Now camera network, plenty of sunshine around central Indiana at this hour is making for a beautiful evening. But as nice as this is, we really need the rain. Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory is here to help you prepare for your Thursday night and for the start of your Friday. Hey, Kevin. And Mark, we could use days of rain. We do not have that in the forecast. And you just mentioned the big event there. Uh, I think as we go through the weekend, primarily dry. There'll be a slight chance on the Sunday. Next three days story is the temperature. First weekend of fall, summer-like warmth. Temperatures jump into the 80s. Our rain chances are low and arrive on Sunday. Next week, we talk about cooler temperatures and much cooler temperatures. We're in the upper 70s now in most locations, almost 80 in Muncie. Next three days, 80 tomorrow, temperatures peak on Saturday, we still maintain some warmth on Sunday. I'll focus on rain potential and what happens with a couple different cold fronts and what it means for how you dress next week coming up. People in Indiana are still dying every day with COVID-19. Today, the Indiana State Department of Health reports 17 additional COVID-19 deaths. 3,322 Hoosiers have now died with the coronavirus since the pandemic began. And 8.6% of those tested for COVID-19 in Indiana tested positive for the virus. First time unemployment claims in Indiana have decreased, but just slightly. The Department of Labor says 12,416 Hoosiers filed first time unemployment claims during the week ending September 19. The week before that, a little more than 13,000 people in Indiana filed for unemployment for the first time. In the 27 weeks since the pandemic began, more than a million Hoosiers have filed for unemployment. Our Hiring Hoosiers campaign is finding open jobs, even though many other companies have laid off their employees. It is time for the job feed tonight. Kohl's wants to fill more than 2,000 seasonal positions at its fulfillment center in Plainfield. The company is also looking to add seasonal associates to its store teams for the holiday season. 
Experience, Strength and Hope LLC in Indianapolis offers recovery consultant services. The company needs several different types of therapists. Experience, Strength and Hope is located at 4954 East 56th Street. Hiring Hoosiers partner Spherion is hiring packagers and machine operators for Weaver Popcorn. Pay ranges from 16 to 1825 an hour. The United States Postal Service will hold a job fair this weekend in Indianapolis. This is a drive through job fair on Saturday from 10 a.m. until 1 in the afternoon. It's happening at 3939 Vincennes Road on Indy's northwest side. Radio plans to hire more than 2,500 entry-level fulfillment center workers for the holiday season at its facility in Brownsburg. You can learn more about all of these jobs and find other opportunities on the Hiring Hoosiers Facebook page and on our website at HiringHoosiers.com. Today, Walmart announced plans to build a new fulfillment center in Hancock County that will employ up to 1,000 people by the end of the year 2025. The 2.2 million square foot warehouse will be Walmart's largest e-commerce fulfillment center in the country, according to a news release from the Indiana Economic Development Corporation. Walmart plans to spend $600 million to build and equip the facility which will be located north of Mount Comfort Road and south of town of McCordsville. Construction is expected to begin this month. The company expects to begin fulfillment and distribution in the fall of 2022 and reach full operational capacity by the spring of 2024. COVID-19 is making life harder for everyone, including a program that helps eighth graders explore future career paths. Coming up, how that program is adapting to make sure students discover new opportunities even during the pandemic. Could a phone call get Colts receiver T.Y. Hilton back on track? T.Y. talks about this week's motivation and the Colts get ready for another weekend at home. We'll have a look ahead coming up in sports. Kevin. And Mark, there's some big changes in my forecast as we go into next week. One of those is at least a chance for this. We'll talk about rain potential coming up. Five young people in Connorsville are in critical condition but stable after taking muscle relaxants provided by another juvenile. Connorsville police say they were called for an unconscious young person who had taken the medication. Dispatchers say they then took several 911 calls reporting overdoses. There have been no deaths from this incident. The officers say they have identified the person believed to be responsible for supplying the drugs. A WRTV working for you update. Residents in a Greenfield neighborhood are happy tonight. That's because there are no longer plans to put a four line road right in the middle of the Walnut Ridge community. You may remember back in August, neighbors in Greenfield's Walnut Ridge were vocal in their opposition of a proposed road extension in the city's 2020 thoroughfare plan. The plan called for the potential of extending McLarnon Road, excuse me, McLarnon Drive, which would have meant a four lane road running through their neighborhood. But last night, the Greenfield City Council voted six to one to remove the McLarnon extension from the plan. A spokesperson for the Walnut Ridge neighborhood says they are still trying to work with the city of Greenfield to buy the property so they won't have to deal with this again. Major changes for the school year forced an annual job expo event for eighth graders to take a new approach. It's an effort to keep inspiring young people toward careers even amid a pandemic. In a hiring Hoosiers report, Amanda Starantino shows us how J.A. Job Spark is still getting the job done. It's a career expo gone virtual. The event held annually at the Indiana State Fairgrounds with interactive hands-on booths looks more like a video game this year. It's basically a like virtual building. Like you go into each room, there are like virtual meetings like at certain times. AJ and Emma Croner are eighth graders at St. Simon. They are two of more than 10,000 Central Indiana students taking part in JA JobSpark this year. Junior Achievement's goal is for every student to have a post-secondary plan that leads them to a career and future success. When you're talking about business and finance, um, I never knew I was so good at with like numbers and stuff, but I really learned that I was. With me, it was health and life sciences. I never knew that I really wanted to become something in pharmacy until yesterday when I read about JobSpark. The brother and sister took career assessments through JA JobSpark to help them find the right path based on their personality traits and interests. JA JobSpark will open the doors to a variety of industries, including manufacturing, agriculture, business and finance, law, government, tourism, tech, and health sciences. It also allows businesses to start recruiting the next generation of their workforce. At the eighth grade, when they're, they're making these decisions right now and deciding what they really want to do, 
So that's why we want to expose them as early as possible to a healthcare career. IU Health is taking part in JobSpark this year and related their lesson to today's pandemic, allowing students to take part virtually in a demonstration with live lamb lungs on a ventilator and have a discussion with respiratory therapists and doctors. Hopefully it makes it look interesting and something that they might want to pursue when they get older. And while these eighth graders are young, JA JobSpark is keeping them inspired and informed about what's possible in the future. I want to help people sort of now more than I did. I want to be something in pharmacy or go and be a lawyer. I want to be an eye doctor. Um, that just fascinates me. I'm excited to learn about like which jobs I may not know, which I wanted, like what I didn't know I wanted to do, like learn about like what skills I'm good at and things like that. And that was Amanda Starantino reporting. Depending on the industry students choose, they learn those specific skills, especially in careers that are in high demand. To learn more about Junior Achievement of Central Indiana, visit HiringHoosiers.com and click on this story. Kevin. Ah, nice day today in central Indiana, all 92 counties. There's a picturesque spot along White River looking to downtown Indianapolis. Another dry day in the books, and it looks like a couple more before we get at least a decent opportunity for rain. We'll have two different cold fronts that will bring a chance for some rain to central Indiana, and it'll definitely deliver a punch of cooler air on the way. It's not cool now, though. It's 81 in Lafayette, 77 in the metro area. Let's zoom in a little more. 76 in Castleton, temperature up in Fisher's mid-70s. Martinsville at 74, you get the idea. Talk about the next three days. And you can see Saturday, the warmest of the three, not by much. Sunday, still competitive in the 80s. Enjoy that. That summer-like warmth will disappear quickly and likely not reappear maybe for a long, long time. Temperatures will be below average, and it starts certainly Monday, but it's felt big time Tuesday and Wednesday. You'll go from shorts and a short sleeve shirt over the weekend to long pants and a, a jacket at least Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, I know some of you, they don't wear a coat all winter long. Um, you're hardy, and uh, some people just deal with it that way. Okay, below average temperatures. As you can see, into and through that first week of October, and that's not just for the Hoosier State or the Midwest, the Great Lakes. It's really the eastern half of the country that will feel the flow of Canadian air. As we transition to the cooler temperatures, there'll be a couple different cold fronts. I don't want to pick our hopes up, but these are rainfall potential numbers from a couple different forecast models. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Temperatures tomorrow, right at 80 degrees, a mixture of clouds and sunshine. Friday night football, a good night for Friday night football, mostly clear. Temperatures will settle into the 60s by the time the games end. Then we streak our way to 84 Saturday afternoon. That chance of thunderstorms later in the day Sunday. The wind will increase out of the south through the day on Saturday. It becomes fairly gusty over 20 miles per hour into the evening hours. Look at the overnight lows as warm as 64 Sunday morning, but as cool as 44 next Thursday morning. Temperatures warmest at the beginning of the seven-day forecast, coolest at the end as we start a string of likely days where highs will only be in the 60s and some lows in the 40s. I think that's when Mark will start to see more of an explosion of color, uh, confirming it is fall. Bring it on. Those make the best pictures. All right, Kevin, thanks. One loss and one win to start for the season for the Colts. Which of those teams will show up for this Sunday's matchup? The Colts host the Jets for week three. Brad Brown has a look ahead, plus more from this week's top storylines. The Colts walked off the field with an extra bounce in their step last Sunday. A dominant win like they had over the Vikings will do that. But the offense is still trying to find its rhythm. T.Y. Hilton has had an uncharacteristic slow start. You know, rough, rough two weeks, uh, but we won it once. So I just got to find a way to uh, stop making plays. Zero lost confidence or anything for that matter. I mean, shoot, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a long season, and uh, you know he's going to make a ton and ton of big plays for us, and uh, he's already made some, and he's going to continue to. A handful of drops already, including a couple that cost the Colts points. But a phone call this week just might be getting the veteran receiver back on track. My grandma, she just always keep it uh, 100 with me. She always shoots it straight with me. And just 
Let me know what's up. You know, she's 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 my rock. She's my heart, and but well, she's always kept it real. And you know, she said, you know, you you look frustrated, and you know, um, that's not the way I play this game. You know, I'm always happy, always excited. So, um, you know, uh, I'm back to being me. I'm, I'm good. The defense set the tone. Indy's D leads the league in total yards against through the first two weeks. Nobody cares that you defense um, top defense week one, week two, week three. Nobody gives a care. But once it's week 15, 16, that's when, you know, everybody says, okay, who's the number one defense? So we got to make sure that we can obtain and stay that way. The ongoing saga of Darius Leonard and his wedding ring continues. He tossed his gloves to a young fan Sunday with the ring still inside. I thought I took a shower and as I was putting on my clothes and, you know, I looked down and I was like, uh-oh, I don't have my ring. So that's when, you know, I kind of panic a little bit. Social media took over from there, and soon Leonard will be reunited with his jewelry. I don't, I don't plan to take it off. I'm going to continue to wear it. Um, I now just have to, you know, be careful whenever I take my gloves off and throw them in the stand to make sure that the ring is still on my finger. But I, I would never stop wearing my ring. With the Jets coming here this Sunday, the Colts will look for more of what worked in week two. You know, looking forward to this week. Um, you know, want to continue just to do uh, the little things right, uh, continue to have good balance on offense, you know, continue to, you know, stop the run on defense um, and, and just and get turnovers. Here's a look at the next stretch of games for the Colts leading up to the bye week, which comes at the end of October. Two on the road will follow Sunday's home game at Chicago and Cleveland. The Colts will likely be favored in all three of those October games. So perhaps a chance to put together a winning streak early in the season. The Colts are a 12-point favorite for this week's game against the Jets. Brad Brown, WRTV Sports. Comfortable tonight. Temperatures will be mostly clear. Our sky will be mostly clear with temperatures in the 50s. Tomorrow we'll hit 80 for the high. Lots of sunshine again. Warmer temperatures in the low to mid 80s over the weekend. Now Mark. I'll leave you with this view of the sunshine here at the 6 o'clock hour. Up next here is World News with David Muir. And we're back with you tonight at 7.